Well, last week we finished building the fence. Right. Uh, the, the wood part of the fence. <laughs> the wood part, yes. Because there are other parts. But uh, now it looks like a brand new fence. And what we want is a fence, parts of it that look like they've been out here for 20 years, parts that look like they've been out here for 50 years. And that happens right away with a wooden fence. <laughs> <laughs> right away. So this is the look we're after. I didn't want to paint it and I didn't want to stain it. I just wanted it to look like bare wood that had been left out in the weather. And as it happens, there's a technique for doing that using vinegar and rust. Oh, gee. And, and there's all these formulas online, and so we wanted to test all these different things that people are saying about it. Now, we did find a guy in Spring City that rebuilt his barn. He used a lot of the old original barn wood, but he added new wood to it, and he aged that wood using vinegar and rust. Oh, wow, how interesting. And he had to mix up uh, like 50 gallons of it. Yeah, I imagine for a barn, that'd be a good <laughs> bit. Anyway, we mostly followed his recipe, but like I say, there's a lot of recipes online. They all start off with this, good old plain distilled white vinegar. Well, it's really affordable too. And it's everywhere. Oh yeah, yeah let's so make sure it's not everywhere. Yeah, all leave, yeah. leave your wine out and it'll, anyway. <laughs> Then you need some rust. Oh, there it is. And oddly enough, it seems to be sort of hard to find, but we got plenty because we pick it up when we're walking old railroad grades. So this is just some rust that we picked up uh, just out somewhere on a railroad grade somewhere as a souvenir. Right. Now, some of the formulas online, people say, well, use steel wool. Oh my gosh, steel wool. I can make steel wool rust just looking at it. Well, that's the key. What we found, though, is if you just stick it in the vinegar, it didn't really work at all. No, what you do is get an SOS pad and leave it at your kitchen <laughs> sink. Now, we also needed a container to put all this in that we could easily throw away because the assumption was we were going to make a big mess and we were not disappointed. Right. So we just packed this whole thing up to the trash when we were done with it. Now, some people in Australia said add salt. Oh, yeah, salt's corrosive. Salt's corrosive. So I don't know if it helped or not, but we decided to do the Australian technique and just throw some salt in there. Hey, it worked here in Utah for years on <laughs> Chevys. And... Yeah. yeah, leave your Honda out in the 1970s and watch it dissolve immediately. Anyway, so then we added the vinegar to the salt, and now we were ready to try to dissolve a bit of rust in there. Um, we weren't sure exactly how much salt to add, so our rule of thumb was, oh, plenty. Plenty or any. <laughs> or any. Any. Because <laughs> again, we have no idea. Oh. This Only the Australians said to use salt, uh, so I don't know at the end of the day if it accomplished anything. So I started by throwing a wee bit of uh, steel wool in there. Mm. And then uh, the steel wool just sat there. It wasn't doing anything. So I added a couple of rusty bits here, the rusty cotter pin. And this is actually a carriage bolt, I think. Could be a railroad spike. It's Whatever it is, it's very rusted. But boy, as soon as the, the big chunk of metal went in there, it reacted immediately. Oh, look at that. Started to fizz and boil. And, and so what you definitely need to uh, not put a tight lid on this because that's giving off, they said uh, online, hydrogen. You might also want to avoid having this near an open flame. Oh boy, you really have a volcano. I really have a volcano. Anyway, I wanted to get more rust going. Right. So I threw a full-size railroad spike in there. Oh gee. Now at this point, the steel wool is just sitting there looking at us and not doing a darn thing. And these other chunks of metal are fizzing and boiling. Right. So I was sort of disappointed. And a lot of people online said, you've got to leave steel wool in there for like four days. Oh. I wonder. I wonder. So anyway, I thought I would test this, and so I just dipped a, a little stick in here, one of our skinny sticks that we used for building the fence, and I assumed that it would just change color, and what it's doing is absolutely nothing at all. It just looks wet. Yeah. Well, what I didn't realize is it's a chemical reaction that will happen over hours. And once that stuff is on there, it literally starts up a chemical reaction inside the wood. Oh my. And within about 15 minutes, look, it started turning kind of a gray. Oh, look at that. And then it depends how much rust is in the vinegar, whether it's gonna turn a feathery gray or a darker brown or how dark. So if you want this feathery gray, you just, uh, don't leave the rust in there for more than about 24 hours and you'll get that color right there. It will continue to get darker 
for the next 24 hours though. Oh my. But at first there's there's no color to it at all. Huh. So that that was very revealing. I had no idea that was going to happen. Well, let's try rusting that steel wool first. Yeah, so we took a paper plate and a big wad of steel wool and just soaked that in the sink for a second and threw that on the plate and left overnight. Yes, just like my SOS pad. I've had this happen so often. Well, and it'll ruin the sink and uh -huh, everything. Uh-huh, <laughs> yeah, you hear me cuss. So here we are the next day and look what's happened. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm just amazed. There's hardly any of it left. And what is left is just this crunchy, rusty stuff. And that gooey, rusty water under there. I'm going to mix up just a batch of that for rusting stuff. <laughs> In the meantime, we threw this steel wool into the vinegar. And boy, talk about a reaction. Ah, wow, look at that. And where normally you have to leave your metal in here for a day or two days or three days, you do this and you've got a very hot mixture within about, I don't know, an hour. Something like that. It, it was, was it was it, darkening it wood. It was smoking. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really want to do a hot mix really fast, that's the way to do it. Just soak some uh, steel wool in water, let it sit overnight, and then throw that in your vinegar and you'll have rusty nail water in no time oh, flat. Check that out. Woo. So I'm daubing it on three different test sticks here, including the one that I dipped yesterday. And uh, let's just see what happens. Again, it's gonna be a chemical reaction over time. And so now we're gonna have to wait, uh, not, not terribly long, and just see what happens with these three sticks and see how dark they actually turn. What we should probably be playing is the dun 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 dun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we sit there watching it. We're sitting here watching it, and uh, it it's it's a slow process, but actually you started to see color here in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. There's the color starting to emerge, and look what it did to the gray color. Oh, it's getting dark. It's getting really dark. And every, oh, I don't know, about 10 minutes, I took another shot here as it got darker and darker and darker. And then, like I say, one of the weird things about this is you have to really let it stand for about 24 hours oh. if you really want to see what color it's going to turn. Right. Because it, while well, most of the darkening is going to happen over about the first 30 minutes, but there it is the next day. Oh, look at that. What? Yeah, it turned that dark. Oh, gee. <laughs> so before you put it on your barn, you might want to do a lot of tests to figure out just exactly what you've mixed. But I think this is the perfect look for our fence. Oh, I like it for the fence. And every board turns out a slightly different color because of the chemical reaction. So I just did one of our little fence sections and look at that. Right. Now our reference is the power pole. <laughs> the power pole is a dowel, and, and we've been using these dowels for power poles around the railroad because they accidentally got left out in the yard for 10 years. Yes, they're really weathered for good. <laughs> That's real live weather. That's yeah, 10 that... years of sitting out, uh, unfortunately exposed to the weather. And uh, I've been coveting this box of dowels ever since because, oh my gosh, they're just perfect. So that's that's our reference color. And look, it matches in pretty nice. Isn't that something? So I went ahead and painted the whole rest of the fence. Now, what, I, what hadn't quite occurred to me is that means that over this amount of time, the rust has been sitting on the vinegar, making the vinegar an even hotter and hotter mix. Uh oh. Which is going to turn it even darker and darker uh -huh. and darker. Uh huh. So when you're doing these test strips, you need to, when you find the right color, or you think you found your right color, because it's going to take a while, get your rusty bits out of the vinegar. I was just going to say, you better get a strainer. <laughs> you can always put the rusty bits back in there, but if you leave them in there, your mix is just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And by hotter and hotter, I mean darker and darker and darker. So anyway, I went ahead and brushed this on all of the different fence sections, really putting on a nice layer, getting it really soaked in there, and there's the fence. Oh, look at that! Didn't that turn out neat? Yeah, it looks really weathered. And then I, I tilted up a couple of our rusty corrugated <laughs> metal pads because I want to make sure the colors all work with each other and it sure. all looks proper. And I think the rusty corrugated steel panels look really nice with the weathered wood. And look how uh, the variegation in, in some of the wood, the wood that I stressed by just sanding it and scraping it with a blade, uh, took the color in a much more interesting variegated way than the stuff that 
the, the newer fence stuff. So I actually went back and stressed the, the stressed sections of the fence a little bit more. Mm -hmm. As it would be. As it would be, and then added a second coating of this stuff on there to, to bring out some of those really unusual variegations in color. I wanted to really bring out that grain, really kind of raise some of the grain and make it look really worn. And then I even took uh, a wire brush to it. Right. We've got these little fine wire brushes. And, uh, and this is, again, just on that section of the fence that's supposed to look like the really old dilapidated fence, not the more modern fence. And there it is. There's the dilapidated that fence. That looks really, I'll say good, but it looks great. <laughs> it looks horribly great. <laughs> it looks horribly good. <laughs> now, wherever I had an inadvertent glue daub, it's left a little white spot. Uh, and I knew that would happen, and I tried to get all the glue scraped off before we did this. But then once you do it, oh, well, there's a stop and there's a spot. Mm. So I just went through here with a little acrylic paint and tried to match the color and just daubed a wee bit of paint here and there wherever these white spots were showing through where the glue had kept the, the nail water, the rusty nail water from from soaking in. And then you can see there's a big section right there. It's going to have to be dealt with. And then it's always tricky working with acrylic paints because they have to go on a slightly lighter color because just like the rusty nail water, they darken. Right. <laughs> they darken as, as they dry. So there's a little bit of predicting uh, what your end color is going to be. Okay, so there's the stressed section of the fence right there. Mm, look at that. But there's something going on here that I really like, and that's it's still slightly damp uh, from me dampening it as I was putting the paint on there. And as the water dried out, it kind of went back to a more even color. Oh, really? And I thought, you know, there must be a way to keep the, pl the parts of the fence that would be damp, that would have sucked up some water off the dirt and stuff splashed up on there and keep those looking a bit more wet than the rest of the fence right as it's doing in these pictures because right here the fence is actually a little bit wet uh-huh but it dried out and i uh. thought okay but i've i've always uh, used a technique for making things look wet and that's using uh three-in-one oil Right. And if you just kind of daub a little of that three-in-one, well, I didn't have any three-in-one, so I grabbed some of your vegetable oil. Vegetable oil works. It's good to work with. It doesn't smell like three-in-one no. oil, and that's the only downside, because yeah. I love the smell of three-in-one <laughs> <laughs> Right. So I just took a little bit of vegetable oil, and especially down here where you stressed out the bottom of mm -hmm. these boards, I thought that really needs to look wet and even maybe a little mossy, but mostly yes. just wet because it's right down there in the soil and every bit of rain and water and anything that's going on is going to soak up into that wood and that wood's going to have a, a darker, more corroded look to it and hopefully just also still look slightly damp. And that was my goal with the, uh, uh, the vegetable oil here is just put some places on here where it looks like the wood is slightly damp because maybe it rained a couple of days ago, something like that. <laughs> the trick is just making sure you put it in the right places. And not too much. Not Yeah, just a little because it's going to soak in. The great temptation is to always go too far. Right. And put, make too many wet spots and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Take you can that always, brush away. You can always come back and add, but you can't subtract. No. Yeah, like taking the brush away from the little kit. Yes. <laughs> and there it is. There's the, and you can see down at the bottom where the oil has now dried out and soaked in. And the bottom really looks like it's still slightly damp. Oh, it does. It looks like springtime. Yeah, it just, and I love that, that finished look right there. That is exactly what I was hoping for. Yes. Now we're going to add some weeds and vegetation down in the bottom there because you can actually see through to the backdrop painting. So I just came back with a little bit. You made those flowers. Yep, they're fun. And I, I made a tumbleweed or two. and. <laughs> Just kind of put them along the bottom wherever you could see the backdrop painting showing through the fence that it gave away the fact that it's a backdrop. Anyway, there it is. There's the finished fence where the gate is. I, uh, you know, it's got just the right amount, I think, of moisture soaking up yes. into it. And, and now we're going to come back and add in the corrugated rusty metal panels. Right. But that'll be next week's show. I'm going to show you how we did the 
We've already done a show on how to make rusty corrugated panels, but this is on how to make ruined, half rotted, oh. disintegrating panels that have been used as a as fence patching. So what I did is I made sure to etch it through to the point where it was literally falling apart. Oh wow, look. That'll be next week's ah. show. So anyway, you don't want to miss the show on how to make these wonderful corroded rusty panels. So if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the blue button. Right there. there it is. <laughs> the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you found it informative, informative. <laughs> and not boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday because we're still working on those locomotives.